This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the ramp startup of the AJS 37 Vigan found in DCS World. We'll start by closing the canopy by left clicking on the canopy release lever found on the left side of the cockpit. Next, I'll activate the main power, low pressure fuel, and generator toggle switches found below the canopy release lever, which will cause the master caution to sound off, which can be silenced by pressing the button above the ADI. Next, I'll enable the high pressure fuel valve, which is found on the base of the throttle and rock the throttle back into idle and activate the starter by pressing the toggle switch found in front of the throttle. At this point it's simply a matter of waiting for the engine to spool up, powering the generators and supplying power to the rest of the avionics, which will clear up most of the faults we see on the warning and advisories panel. So to save time I will simply skip ahead until the engine is just about spooled up. At this point, the engine's spooled up and the generators are coming online, as indicated by the fact that the CK37 computer system has just been supplied power. So we'll insert the data cartridge in the back wall, and move back over to the CK37 computer. We'll move the data selector into Ref Lola, set it into input, at which point we can enter the code 9099, and hit the LS key to enter the code, which will load the data cartridge. When six zeros are displayed, the data cartridge is loaded, at which point we can set it back into output and set our desired mode, which for me in this case is act pause. Now at this point, it's simply a matter of going through the motions and getting all of our systems set up. I'll be going from left to right. So starting on the left panel, we see the radio selector currently in normal plus guard, so we will leave it here. Internal lighting is found just back from here which in the Vigan provides a nice ambient glow to the instruments. Next, just in front of the radar stick, we can set the master mode selector into navigation. And just up from here, we have our trim indicator. I'm carrying a fuel tank, so I will set it for about 3 degrees nose up trim. Next, moving on to the front dash, we can see our altimeter over on the left, and our backup altimeter over to the right. We'll zero this out for QFE, and we'll disable the HUD slave mode, as this is more useful at low altitude and we'll set the radar altimeter source to barometric. Next I'll uncage the standby ADI. At this point we'll move on to the right console. We'll enable oxygen by flipping the valve to the right of the CK37 computer. And we'll move further back on the panel and we can find the external lighting panel. Just in front of here we can find our countermeasures panel. Currently set on mode 2 with chaff and flare selected, streak selector set at 0 and the radar warning receiver set for audio plus visual alerts. The panel for our electronic countermeasures is just ahead of here. And this will control what mode our jammer is on. So if you have it on mode AF, it'll preheat the jammer, indicated on the caution and advisories panel, and we can move it into any mode other than F to activate it. Though in this case, we're just going to leave it all off because I'm not carrying a jammer. At this point, this is the completed startup. I'll do a double check, make sure I haven't forgotten everything. Though as I see, everything seems to be in order minus the ejection seat, which I reserved for last. So we'll look over our shoulder and activate the ejection seat, at which point we can see the caution advisories board is cleared up, with the only indication being our three landing gear lights. As the Vigan is spawned with its parking brake on, we'll tap W to release the parking brake, and away we are able to roll.